I'm Anjanisa Gupta, and as an aspiring entrepreneur myself, getting to know real life stories of people who've made it in today's world is a true honor. Today with us, we have Ms. Komal Talwar, founder of PT Consultants and Excel Pat. Ma'am, it's wonderful to see you today. Thank you for joining us. You are a successful woman entrepreneur. I would like to know, according to you, what are the traits that a woman entrepreneur must possess? Okay, so I don't, I don't think there's a lot of difference between what a man needs to possess for entrepreneurship and what a, what a woman needs to possess, right? I think when you're undertaking the journey of entrepreneurship, it's, it's gender neutral for me. Um, and honestly, I have not faced any kind of challenges being an entrepreneur just because I'm a woman, right? Um, but nonetheless, I think the general qualities that you must have um, if you want to be an entrepreneur, I think number one is your appetite for risk taking. Um, unlike a job where your responsibilities are defined, your working hours are defined, you know, your, um, your progress in an organization is all defined if, you, if you're able to perform well. Entrepreneurship is like a roller coaster ride, right? And every entrepreneur you can speak to, the most successful entrepreneurs across the world, every entrepreneur is going to go through all kinds of challenges and opportunities at every step of the journey. Um, and um, you have to have a risk taking appetite. Um, you know, you have to also have a lifelong learning uh, ability. Um, you know, you've seen how businesses transform over time. Um, and COVID is an example of how uh, technology has suddenly come into even a field like yours in education, right? So if you're not a lifelong learner and if you're not ready to accept changes and adapt to them very quickly, you cannot be um, on the entrepreneurship journey. So I think adaptability um, and the desire to learn and to be able to learn very quickly and pivot your business models is very important. Um, thirdly, I think it goes for anything in the world. If you have to be at the top, um, you know, top of the pyramid for any profession, whether you're working or you're running a company, I think qualities of hard work, dedication, commitment, uh, you know, it's, it's to be successful, it's a marathon journey. So I think these qualities, I would say, of course, go hand in hand with anything that you want to be successful in, in life. Um, and also, I think one more thing which is very important for an entrepreneur is to think big. Right. So if you think big initially, you know, you have um, you have um, you have very, very high uh, ambitious goals um, and you're able to think big, you're able to think global, you're able to think of a big problem that you're solving. I think thinking big, sometimes we restrict ourselves thinking we won't be able to achieve big things. But I think uh, you have to have a very clear mission and vision on what is it that you're trying to do through your entrepreneurship journey. Are you solving a problem which is, you know, uh, you're, you're kind of like making the customer journey better? Are you solving a problem to make the world a better place? Uh, you know, what, 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 are you, what are you trying to solve, I think? And the bigger the problem, the, the higher chances for you to be successful at it. So I would always say that think global. Don't think you can localize your product or services later, but think of the world as your market um, and think with, and, and kind of start with a bigger mission and vision. How has your journey been so far? How did the germ of the idea for your business come up? Yeah, so I started my first business out of law college. I'm, a, I'm an economics graduate from uh, Riddhi Sridham College, Delhi. Um, and I was in law college um, and I, I was in Chandigarh for my law. Um, and uh, during my, actually, I, I felt like the law studies didn't really demand, demand a lot of time. Uh, it was pretty simple after an economics honor from LSR. And I had time to explore new opportunities. Um, and um, so we, we work in the world of patents. Patents is when you get inventions over your technology rights. It's a very new field. It's one of the newest fields in India. Uh, and it's a blend of technology and law. Um, and when I started uh, getting the business idea, we were about five, six companies in India uh, who had started venturing into the space. Mm -hmm. um, and I started with like a $1,000 investment. I'm a first time entrepreneur. No one in my family is an entrepreneur. We come from a family of, uh, you know, uh, bureaucrats and educators. Um, and I was the first one really to say, okay, fine. Um, you know, this is something I want to start. I felt that it was a, it was a brilliant idea. Nobody was really in the market at that time. 
I also felt that um, uh, it had a lot of potential in the future and I could be one of the early people to break into the industry. And I started with a very small little investment of $1,000. Um, I started an online website. Um, I hired one part-time girl who would help me to build email campaigns and reach out to customers. And um, after I tasted some success online, I packed my suitcases one day and I flew to the US. I spent four or four, five months there discovering the market, meeting clients, understanding what is it that they need. And today we are about uh, you know 300 engineers and lawyers in the company. We've got offices in DC, San Francisco, Tokyo, Taiwan, Germany. Um, and we work with more than 10,000 clients across the world, um, you know, all Fortune 100, 500 companies. Um, and then, uh, so the, the business has really done well. It's been very successful. We won International Innovation Awards. I'm a Forbes feature and I'm a World Economic Forum member. Uh, one of the only ones to be invited from Punjab for uh, at Davos for the last four years. Uh, I won international entrepreneurship awards, you know, all that. Uh, but about two, three years ago, I, I decided to uh, get into a new business. So, so we launched an, an AI product, an artificial intelligence based product, uh, which helps companies to innovate. So at the click of a button, it tells you within an industry, what are the technology trends? Where is the market heading? Uh, you know, if you have an invention, should you patent it or not, et cetera, et cetera. So it's the world's largest technology data set in the world. Uh, and we are the only Indian company right now among the 10 global companies to have that technology. Um, and uh, we are licensing that across the world. Um, so it's a new business again. So I'm a second time entrepreneur now. I've started, I've taken a new challenge um, to go from a completely services consulting business into an AI product, which is going to be the future for, um, I believe, which is going to be the future for innovations across the world. Um, and I'm really enjoying this journey also. How far the business world, according to you, has evolved? I think if you talk about women, I think uh, there's no better time right now for women to be in business um, because there's number one, um, you know, people say that the funding for women led businesses is less. I kind of disagree with that. Uh, there are so many special programs right now across the world uh, that is offered for women entrepreneurs, whether it's, uh, you know, scholarships, fellowships for women entrepreneurship, or it's at an incubator level, or it's, you know, a government promoted uh, businesses and also a lot of organizations are looking at diversity in a very big way now where you know they understand that diversity at the workplace whether it's at a leadership position or it's at a entry-level position is very important so women actually are being recognized uh, number one for what they're doing and number two there are definitely more platforms and opportunities available for them um, also because of the COVID, the post-COVID world, there are so many options for women to work from home. You know, most companies across the world are offering that option to you where you can really balance your work life so much better. Um, and also there are such amazing online business opportunities, right? I mean, you have to be, if you have a great idea and you have a good product, the world is your market sitting in, in, sitting in your room. In fact, at home, you can, you can, you can run a business now. Uh, so I think it's an amazing time for, for girls, for young girls to be encouraged to take, take on the entrepreneurship journey. Um, and I think if the, if the parents can instill that kind of a value in the girls at a very early age, uh, the kind of support they give to boys, especially in the Northern India, when a boy wants to start a business, the whole family comes together to support them, right? So if the same thing, it's, I think it starts at a very family level where when I was brought up, I was brought up like a boy, right? I was told that you can marry a donkey, but you need to be on your own feet. You know, you have to def you have to be your on your own feet economically. And then you can marry a donkey, you can live wherever you want in the world, but get your, get your career right first. Um, and even when I started my entrepreneurship journey, my mom and dad gave me complete support. I and mean, they didn't know what I was doing, what kind of an idea I was venturing into. But I had the support of the family that, you know, try it. What will happen if, even if you fail, you have a you have economics and law to back you. You can always go back to a regular job. So I think that kind of a support system, I think if you can start instilling that at a, at a very school level, you know, where the girls feel that, okay, fine, there are all these opportunities in the world uh, that I have, but the backing really has to start from home. Um, so I think it's really high time that parents uh, understand how much the world around us has changed and what the girls can achieve. 
um, and give them that kind of a support, not just for getting married, but to get their career started first. We are celebrating women entrepreneurs today, but we all know that behind all this, there are hardships and struggles that all women entrepreneurs must go through from social perceptions, gender inequality to financial blocks. It's a long and arduous journey till we reach this stage. What are some of the barriers that you had to overcome to reach where you are today? No, not at all. Um, you know, I, I, I function in an, in a, in an international space. Um, I, I make about eight to 10 business travel uh, trips every year. Um, and honestly, I've never faced discrimination. I think if you're very good at what you do um, and you know your space very well, I think you're considered as good or as bad as a man in today's world. So I think it's really about the talent that you bring on the table, the value you bring on the table. I don't think there's discrimination, but I definitely think that yes, support systems are very important for us to survive. I have two young boys mm -hmm. uh, and I know that without the support of my parents being with me, um, you know, um, locally, um, this kind of travel and this kind of work schedule would be very difficult for me to sustain. Um, so I think your support from your family, and I think in India, we are very blessed. Uh, you know, people say that people complain about joint families in India and they complain about, uh, you know, less freedom in India. But I think it's how you look at it. If you can make that system your support system and, and you know, your, your extended family can be with you, uh, you can honestly do anything. So I think it's a question of them being in line with your ambitions and being in line with your values. And when they see what you're doing, believe me, all of them are going to be very proud of you. Um, and a lot of these, uh, you know, support systems come together because everybody loves people who are successful, uh, whether it's a man or a woman. And, you know, when they see you uh, receiving awards and, and doing very well financially, it's a very proud moment for everybody. And all those biases start dropping down. So I think um, I've fortunately not faced any biases. I've been very lucky that uh, I've had a beautiful journey so far. But of course, for women, the work-life balance is always going to be a challenge. Uh, you will have to cut down on uh, things which are not necessary in your life. You will have to be extremely focused um, and uh, you will have to get your support systems right. We come across this advice often that one successful woman can uplift and make a change to the lives of many other women. And it's that network of women that helps in empowering, uplifting, and building more entrepreneurs. How much is your belief in the power of building a network? Yeah, yeah. So I'm a big believer in the fact that if you lead somewhere in life, you need to give back, right? Especially for women, because there's just such few of us at, at leadership positions, um, you know, at a CEO level or at a founder level. So it's very important. So what I've really done, number one, is I've really contributed to our workplace. So I said we are about 300 engineers and lawyers. We are one of the best places in India for women to work. Um, <clears throat> so we've been certified by the best, by the great places to work. And I have uh, a 50% women, uh, women employee ratio um, at the leadership position. We have a 100% return to work. Uh, ratio where women who get married or have kids, 100% of them have returned to work. Um, and we do a lot of mentoring on leadership and we've got a lot of women into diverse school sets. That's one thing that I do because I feel I can really contribute to where I am at the workplace, right, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, number two, I also run a lot of programs with the United Nations on, uh, on, on promoting and funding um, education for women in technology. Uh, so we fund a couple of uh, ITIs in Punjab and we do other things where we sponsor programs on artificial intelligence, machine learning, coding lessons for girls. And then we help them to absorb them in, um, in IT companies for, uh, for jobs. Uh, that's the second thing that we are really doing at a, at a larger scale. And of course, I'm a part of a lot of powerful networking programs, including Thai women, uh, CII at the local level, World Economic Forum at the global level. And I've represented India at the United Nations, at World Economic Forum, at, at the best international conferences. And I think when people also meet you and, and listen to you at these forums, there's a lot of inspiration for 
what they can also do if if you could start with a thousand dollar funding um being a one time entrepreneur and go global i think that in itself is also very inspiring for women so i make sure that i spend a lot of time on the weekends talking to students if someone needs one to one mentoring or they have an idea and they want to take it further i do all that as a part of my responsibility i feel of giving back to uh, especially women and young girls um i feel very fortunate to be a part of that network now it is time for a very crucial question that everyone wants to know learn and imbibe how much of a wellpreneur are you which means how are you managing the multiple fronts that we are managing in achieving that hard to get work life balance yes number one is a lot of lists so first thing in the morning when i wake up is you know i wake up early i go to bed early right i don't socialize or party on weekdays huh? so monday to friday is strictly work it's an extremely disciplined life uh, first thing in the morning i i pull up a piece of paper and i have professional commitments my meetings my external meetings and then stuff that kids need to do in a day and they're planning for the day right so once i have that set up uh, i think that planning at the first thing in the morning is very important for you to get your day right um for for it to be very efficient and for you to be able to knock off at least 9 out of 10 things which are on your list um number 2 is just as i said discipline right like you know you have to be extremely disciplined on weekdays on you have to i've had to say no to a lot of things um you know i get i get invited to at least 20 30 panels in a month uh whether it's on women entrepreneurship or leadership or on ai or what i do as a business so you have to be very focused in terms of which ones can you really do and which ones you can't do and you have to really learn to say no um i think women both at home and outside uh in the world have a big problem in being very nice and saying a no um even at home if there are uh, social commitments uh, on a weekday and i can't handle it it's it's a strict no right and people understand that now because they understand that you're doing something serious in life and you know uh it requires discipline so i think that discipline and the ability to be able to say no to a lot of commitments that you can't uh, cope up with even if they don't sound very nice is very important mm-hmm. uh third i think just what i really practice is uh, is exercise so i'm a yoga enthusiast um and i also do a lot of biking Uh, I used to gym before COVID, but now I have a personal trainer who comes home. Um, so a lot of yoga, meditation, about three four days a week, and I do about twelve thirteen kilometers of biking about four five days a week. I think that's very important for me, uh, you know. And again, also eating extremely healthy, um, you know, making sure you I'm getting exercise, making sure I'm getting enough sleep. Uh, I think these things are very important for me. um and they help me to maintain my work life balance uh much better ma'am it was wonderful to hear from you once again thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing such wonderful advice thank you ma'am